Hi everybody and welcome to the class. So today we will continue with the same structure as the other days and hopefully there's no big problem with the connection. I think yesterday we had a very bad connection and we disconnected after 27 minutes. So hopefully that today the connection will be fine and you can uh, follow the class easily. So on the left is the plan for the week. In the morning we have the speaking class at nine o'clock and it's a speaking session available for anybody to join with people with different levels just to practice conversation with different topics and correction and new vocabulary as well and at 11 15 we have the free class as always so this is the plan to continue today and tomorrow and in the afternoon there are specific webinars also at 4 p.m that you are welcome to join today normally it's a business vocabulary a business webinar at four o'clock and you are welcome to attend if you want you can just contact me to confirm your place but today we will continue with the same structure as usual we have the introduction document to explain the different concepts and the different terms in grammar that's number one after the introduction we will probably begin with an article to look at the grammar aspects in relation to the real article and also we have a list of phrasal verbs and a list of idioms as well you can see so these are the um this is the agenda for the class today and hopefully we can continue little by little to uh, check the class so just to check we are live and hopefully there's no problem i think we are good as i said yesterday the connection was really bad and i think i have fixed the problem i think the connection was with bluetooth but today it's with the, the cable so hopefully that's fine so first i will show you the introduction document and this for me is maybe the most important document as you know so this week i have explained every morning this document in detail and today i will just show you the document and name the important concepts instead of explaining everything in detail so today i just show you the document just to give you an idea of the structure of the class and the structure of the terms and the concepts in English so this is a very important document you are probably familiar with it but there are three sections in my opinion the first section is the use of English the second section is the tenses and the third section is in relation to grammar topics and other grammar terms that are very important so as you know probably the use of English is the most important section in my opinion there are three or four parts. The first part is accents. So people have very different accents when we speak English in Ireland. We have a particular accent in different parts of Ireland. There are different accents in England. It's the same. They have a very different accent in different parts. The United States, Australia, Canada. So there are lots of different accents and different dialects when people speak English. And this probably is the most imp uh, difficult thing when you learn English to understand people speaking English this is really difficult and people have difficult different velocities as well so for me that's probably the most important area the second topic is a phrasal verb so a phrasal verb is a combination of the verb and the preposition it's possible literal significance but frequently there's a second completely different significance of the phrasal verb and that changes the significance and the meaning of the sentence completely so phrasal verbs are very important and they're very unique to English and for this reason they are at the top of the list as well similarly idioms are expressions so again idioms are a big part of English we use idioms with friends with family in social situations and also in formal and professional situations so idioms and phrasal verbs are a big part of English and for this reason they are at the top of the list finally conversation is very important and it's key that you try to practice conversation frequently that you try to find somebody to correct your conversation and that is very important when you're practicing and when you try to improve english during the morning at nine o'clock we have the specific speaking class and that's available for you to join at any time so that maybe will help but it's very important that you practice your conversation and somebody can correct your speaking and that's a big part of english pronunciation is very important as well because in english we have a lot of irregular sounds and we have words that are difficult for pronunciation and during the class i try to focus on and try to identify 
the difficult words for pronunciation. So that's very, very important. In tenses, so when you speak the language, we speak in different times and you speak in different tenses. So at the beginning, it's important that you are aware of the different concepts in relation to the time. For example, the simple, present simple, past simple, future simple, they are the most common. We also have the continuous, present continuous, past continuous, future continuous. Okay, so they're the two areas that are really typical. And finally, we have the perfect. We have the present perfect, you have the past perfect, and you have the future perfect. So those three, the simple, continuous, and the perfect are extremely important. They are so common and they are part of every sentence and every situation in English. So they're uh, key for you to understand very, very well. Also, the idea of the infinitive is the base or the foundation of the verb. And normally it's to go, to eat, to have, to drink. This is the infinitive. And finally, we have the active and the passive and also the conditionals. So the conditionals are a little heavy. The theory is very difficult when you study the conditional in the book. You have the zero conditional, first, second, third, mixed conditional. So in the book, it's very heavy. But in reality, in conversation, it's less strict. In my opinion, it's very flexible. And basically, it's related to the word if and a different time. If it rains today, I will not go to the city centre. So the conditionals are a big part of English. And finally, the active and the passive. So typically, the active is the verb, the, sub the subject, the verb, the object. And to create the passive, we change the position of the subject and the object. We introduce an extra verb to be and also the participle of the verb. So the active and the passive is very important. So those are the most important concepts. Those are the most important terms in relation to the tenses when you learn English. And they are very important for you to understand very well. During the class, I mention frequently the terms. So it's necessary and it's important that you are aware of the vocabulary and the terms, okay? Similarly, <laughs> in relation to grammar, there are more terms, for example, a noun in Espanol, substantivo, a noun. Every noun, we have an article. We have indefinite article and the definite article, but we also have an adjective. So the function of the adjective is to describe the noun and the position of the adjective normally is before the noun, okay? Because in other languages, it's different and the position of the adjective in Spanish, the position of the adjective in Portuguese, I think is after. But in English, the position is before the noun. We have the adverb. So the function of the adverb is to describe the verb. And typically the adverb is L-Y, quickly, slowly, happily, rapidly. And the position of the adverb is after, okay, the verb. To drink, slowly, to talk, quickly. So that's the concept of the adverb. Also, countable and uncountable in relation to nouns. So is it possible to count the noun or is it not possible? And this is very important in relation to how much and how many. So how many, we say for countable, how many pens, how many books, how many televisions, and how much in relation to uncountable, how much water, how much time, how much energy. So that's a very important concept. Similarly, with adjectives, we have the idea of comparative and superlative. So this book is good, but this book is better than this book, and this book is the best. So this is the concept and the idea of the comparative and the superlative in the area of the adjectives. OK, modal verbs are very unique and very particular in English. We have a group of modal verbs which are dedicated to different areas. For example, ability. We use can. I can speak Japanese. It's my ability. I can play the guitar. Also for permission. I can enter the room. I can go to the bathroom. It's permission. And for ability, could, may and might are three similar verbs for possibilities and options. I could go to the cinema. I may go to the cinema. I might go to the cinema. They are used in the situations for options and the situations for possibilities. They are practically the same, but may and might are maybe a little more formal. And that's basically the only difference between the three. Shall is typical for the question and it's very similar to will. Shall we enter the room? Shall we contact your friend? It's the same significance as will. OK, should and ought to are typical for advice and recommendation. When you give advice or when you give a recommendation, it's typical in English to use the verb should. You should 
watch the television. You should read this book. It's my recommendation and my advice. The verb ought to is practically the same. The pronunciation is a bit more difficult. The G is silent. It's a bit more formal. You ought to read this book is a bit more polite and a bit more formal, but it's very common and it's very important that you are aware of this verb ought to. Must is obligation, so you have no choice. You must collect the children. You must read the book. It's obligation and you have no choice. It's the same as have to. You have to collect the children. You have to read this book and you must read this book. So that's very important. That area of the modal verbs is huge. It's enormous in relation to importance. We use modal verbs all the time and they are a fundamental part of the language and they are necessary that you identify them frequently. And the big rule in relation to modal verbs is the modal verb is typically before another verb. And the rule is we eliminate to for the next verb, must go, can, have, might, see. That's correct. The error is to use must to have, might to go. So it's necessary to remove, kitar, to remove the to from the next verb. That's the big rule with the modal verbs, okay? Prepositions. So prepositions are a big part of English and we have maybe 150 prepositions and they are related to movement they are related to direction and they are related to position okay so prepositions are huge in relation to phrasal verbs we use prepositions all the time and yes there is an association with emotion in relation to the prepositions for example up is positive happy creation down is negative destruction and to destroy and sad so there is an association with emotion in relation to prepositions in the phrasal verbs OK, the next area, we have three sections, possessive adjective, possessive pronoun and object pronoun. OK, so technical explanation. But basically, the difference between my hat, your hat, his hat, her hat or the hat is mine. The hat is yours. The hat is his. The hat is hers. Or third, give the hat to me, give the hat to you, give the hat to him, masculine and give the hat to her. So particularly in relation to masculine and feminine, it's typically confused. So you need to be very clear and very, very sure with the use. For example, his, her, his, hers, or him, her. Really important. Also the difference, this, that, these, and those, that's a typical confusion and you need to be clear. Basically, this is singular here. That is singular in a different position. These is plural here, and those is plural in a different position. So you are probably familiar with this because I have explained this, of course, before, but today it's just a very brief and very quick uh, show and introduction of the terms, okay? Suffix and prefix, okay, is important, but also the difference between another, other, the other, and the others. But yes, prefixes and suffixes are a big area, and normally I recommend highly to study the area of suffixes and prefixes. It's the little combination of letters at the end of the word which indicates the form of the word. For example, A-N-C-E is typically the noun, the importance. I-Z-E is typically the verb to realize, to monetize, to fantasize. So they're very, very typical indicators for the verb, adjective, noun, adverb, okay? So L-Y is typically the adverb. Conjunctions or linkers are key in English. They make English more cohesive. They make English more fluent and we have some basic linkers. We have some very simple linkers, but also we have some more advanced, more complicated linkers. For example, moreover, furthermore, um, as well as this. So we have a lot. And the key for the linker is to use them appropriately in the correct context and in the correct situation. Then there's no problem. OK. Writing. So, of course, there are five areas, in my opinion, when you learn a language. Reading. You need to read. You need to read a lot. Books, magazines, newspapers in relation to grammar and structures and vocabulary. So when you read, you can see a lot of information. Grammar. You need to study a lot of grammar. You need a book or you need maybe a website that you can check the grammar frequently. Uh, speaking. You need to practice speaking frequently with a friend or somebody to correct you. Uh, listening, you need to practice listening to the radio, to the uh, television, but also 
uh, better is to practice speaking with somebody and you can listen to other people and finally writing is the final skill that you need to maintain and you need to practice so there are different levels of writing and different styles of writing but it's a very good idea to practice your writing and to try to improve regularly your writing because it's a big part of English of course in professional situations it's necessary to write and it's necessary to be correct and to be very very clear okay exams exams are very popular and the Cambridge exams are key you have the first certificate the advanced certificate and the proficiency certificate but also the IELTS exams are very popular and we have specific webinars dedicated to the exams for example yesterday every Thursday there is a webinar for the advanced exam tomorrow at one o'clock there's a specific webinar dedicated to the B2 to the first certificate exam and on Wednesday we have the webinar dedicated to the IELTS exam okay so they are the key exams and they're very popular and I try to help in relation to this so that's the introduction that they are the most important topics in relation to learning English <clears throat> in my opinion every day it's a good idea to be familiar with the structure it's a good idea to be to refresh if you are a beginner it's important but also if you are an expert still it's important you refresh and try to remember the concepts okay so I hope we have no problem with the connection I don't know at the moment I think everything is okay yesterday was a disaster with the connection so hopefully today is okay and now we will begin with an article so I want to show you a typical article and first I will share my screen so here we have a typical article from the BBC and yesterday we the intention yesterday was to see an article from the BBC but because we were disconnected it was impossible so today we selected another article probably in relation to style and in relation to fashion so this is the first time in the free classes to look at an article in relation to style and in relation to fashion and we might see some good vocabulary here some good expressions in relation to this area of fashion and maybe some people you work in a shop in fashion and it's important that you are familiar with the terms and also the specific vocabulary in relation to fashion but this article is just a little sample okay so you can see here the title is so I'm just going to move it so everybody can see the title is generation X generation Z and Millennials and the title is which has the best style in relation to generation X generation Z and Ge and the Millennials so these are terms we use in English in relation to the year you were born so I I'm not sure but I could be generation X Millennials are maybe younger with technology they're very accustomed to technology so the question is which generation has the best style so this is the topic so here you have a picture and I think this is the the celebrity but we will explain a little bit more and first I will read the paragraphs just in relation to pronunciation first and after I read I will return to examine and to explain the key vocabulary and the key grammar contexts okay so I will identify for example this I will highlight the important vocabulary while I speak because here we can see some very very important vocabulary okay so the spat about hair partings and skinny jeans isn't the first time there has been an intergen style war different generations have always used fashion and hair to make their mark says Cassidy George okay so the article is from February but we will continue when so this is when TikTokers Julia L and Amelia Coleman shared what they thought to be humorous videos saying they would rather be homeless or die than wear a pair of skinny jeans okay skinny is the important word and they did far more than attack a trouser style they find unflattering they alongside TikToker Miss Lady Gle uh, Gleepy I don't know who in a far more innocuous viral video 
said, prove me wrong. But I don't think there's a single person that looks better with a side parting. OK, so this is very specific vocabulary in relation to hair. Dan, a middle part, helped transform a simmering rivalry into an app wide intergenerational style war. OK, I'll continue with the next paragraph online. Generation Z is typically from the age nine to twenty four has been criticized, criticizing numerous aspects of mainstream millennial. So a millennial now today is aged 25 to 40. So yes, I am probably, a, well, I am a millennial. Namely, their affections for side parting hair and skinny jeans. In the process, they have unleashed a tidal wave of sassy, self-conscious and downright spiteful reactions from millennials. The trending dispute is so impassioned, not due to a lifelong allegiance to the particular genes or hairstyle in question, but because the accusations of being outdated has forced millennials to face an uncomfortable truth. There's been a transform, a transfer of generational power. So two paragraphs, very, very advanced, some excellent vocabulary and some really, really good expressions. And now I want to explain the key vocabulary and the very, very advanced and very important expressions. So the first paragraph, this word is the most difficult. It's very fluent and it's very, very good. So the noun is a spat. And the spat is another way to say an argument, a disagreement or a fight. So if you have a spat, the significance is an argument, a disagreement, a dispute. And it's very, very common. It's very, very typical. It's very fluent. But most people, of course, understand a fight. But I'm just going to try and move the text because I don't want the limit here. I see I have a little limit on the on the border, but I don't really want that. OK, no problem. I'll have to live with this situation. So the vocabulary is a spat. And as I said, the significance is an argument or a fight. And most people understand a fight. Most people understand a disagreement, an argument, but more advanced is probably a spat. It's different from the verb to spit, which is completely different. And it's very impolite and very disgusting and very rude when you spit. Spit is when you put the liquid from your mouth out. So you're, you maybe you drink something disgusting and you spit. But it's interesting because the past simple is spat. OK, so it's the past simple irregular and also the participle is spat as well and we say to spit out your dummy is an expression so in relation to the baby when the baby sucks the soother or a dummy okay so we have specific vocabulary in relation to the baby the object that the baby sucks okay the verb is to suck is a dummy or a soother okay and the expression to spit out the dummy is typically when the baby is not happy and the baby is angry, they spit out the dummy. But this is a metaphor for adults. When the adult is not happy, when the adult is having a tantrum, so specific vocabulary to have a tantrum or to throw a tantrum. Okay, we say to throw a tantrum or to have a tantrum. And that means maybe when they are very angry and they go crazy, the baby has a tantrum or they throw a tantrum. And in this situation, typically they spit out the dummy. But again, this is a metaphor for the behavior of an adult. Of course, the typical behavior is for the baby. But when the adult is very unhappy and the adult behaves very uh, similar to a baby, it's perfect opportunity to say he or she spit and spat out the dummy because they were really angry and really upset and um, we have another expression to throw your rattlers out of the buggy so very very specific vocabulary the rattler is the object that the baby moves and shakes because the verb is to rattle and that's typical the verb to move or to shake okay typical for a cage if you have the animal in the cage and you rattle the cage, it's very similar to shake. So the rattler is the object that the baby has. And typically they throw the rattler out of the buggy. So the buggy is the object that you push the baby. 
you can also say the pram so that's the specific expression that we use to throw your rattler out of the buggy is when you are angry when you are sad but typically behavior from the children but we use this as a metaphor in relation to behavior of the adult who is not happy or the adult who is behaving like a baby so really good vocabulary and maybe you can use this vocabulary with some of your friends or some of your fam family so it is possible and um, good vocabulary so here as i said in this case it's the argument it's the discussion it's the dispute it's the fight so the spat about hair partings so a hair parting is the style of the hair so we say to part your hair and when you visit the barber as a man or as you visit the hairdressers for a lady the hairdresser or the barber the person responsible will ask you for your style do you want to part your hair here or end of college at the end of university it's necessary that you part ways that you separate from your friend okay so really good vocabulary and here a hair parting is the style of your hair the position that you separate the side from the top and in the picture here the lady has the hair parting in the middle okay so just a good example specific vocabulary so the argument in social media the argument between the generations is about this topic so obviously not a really dramatic uh, problem skinny is the vocabulary so skinny we have three or four words to explain the same And we use these words frequently and for example a latte you can say a skinny latte and the significance of a skinny latte is the type of milk it's the slim milk the low fat milk okay slim milk low fat milk and typically we say a skinny latte so that means the latte the coffee with the low fat milk okay um thin we and slim we say for opportunity you have a slim opportunity you have a slim um chance okay you have slim chances that means you have very small opportunities or you have very small chances and they are the most typical expressions in social situations in relation to thinny thin and skinny and slim okay and um, there is a verb to slim and that maybe means to lose weight to, to slim down you want to lose weight okay so just a typical expression as well and that's the most typical so isn't the first time there's been an intergen which is like intergeneration style war and a war is a disagreement you are at war with your friend which means you are not talking with your friend and that's very typical one country is at war with another country and um, so just very basic structures and quite typical as well in English with disagreement. If you are at war with your friend, if you are at war with another country, different generations have always used. So this is an example of the present perfect. So the present perfect is typically the period or the action in the past. It's finished, but it is consequential and it is related to the present. The structure of the present perfect is the subject, the extra auxiliary verb to have, and the participle of the original verb so the participle here is used the auxiliary extra verb is have and for this reason we know it's the present perfect the past perfect is very similar except the past perfect has the extra verb in the past had okay and um, and here to make their mark so different generations have always siempre always used fashion and hair to make their mark so this is an expression, it's a famous expression, typically for sports or typically for impact in your career. So you are a doctor and you study medicine 
and you try to find the vaccine or you try to find the medical solution for the problem and finally you make your mark so if you make your mark you do something that everybody remembers you do something that is very significant for everybody so this is the expression to make your mark we have another expression to make a name for yourself so when you start your career you are probably unknown nobody knows you when you start your career so the advice and the objective is to make a name for yourself and the significance is similar to be famous or to become famous or to become well known okay so to become famous to become well known it's to make a mark and also to make a name for yourself they're the two expressions that are very very typical so you want to make your mark the significance is to make an impact typical in business when a new manager enters the company a new manager enters the business and the manager wants to make their mark the significance is the manager wants to uh, show the authority and wants everybody to pay attention to him or to pay attention to her so to make your mark and also to um I suppose stamp you could say to stamp your mark so you can make your mark or to stamp your mark which is the verb in relation to the letter you have a stamp on the envelope so the verb to stamp is very aggressive so to stamp your mark is to show everybody your authority and to show everybody you are in charge you are responsible okay so this is the metaphor that different generations have used fashion and use the hair to show your authority or to show your cool or something like that okay the next paragraph tiktokers is obviously the application and the person is a tick creative english share is very important because you have chocolate and you want to share like distribute and we have an expression in relation to share we say sharing is caring so that's very very famous but the verb to share is typically when you have something and you want to distribute you want to give the product or you want to give the asset to lots of people typical for children you recommend children to share the toys to share the food so it's to give the toy to give the food to other children to enjoy so really really good here is the past simple so it's regular because the but this is just one example of the verb to share okay they is the subject again the verb is to think and the past is thought so here this is classic is thoughtless that means you do not consider your actions you do not consider the behavior so it is thoughtless and um, we have an expression we say a penny for your thoughts and that means i will pay you one penny if you give me your opinion so it's a little expression we say in conversation when you want somebody's opinion we say a penny for your thoughts and um, also you need to be very clear the difference the this is a completely different verb enseñar in espanol but the past is i taught so it's almost the same pronunciation practically the same it's irregular to teach and taught and um, so pronunciation is very very similar but the difference is completely different so here it's the verb to think in the past irregular to be humorous is the adjective okay humor is the noun you have humor you have a good sense of humor but humorous is the adjective before the noun and here the noun is our, is the video and the adjective is humorous they would rather be on the beach i would rather be in warm weather i would prefer to be on the beach i would prefer to be in warm weather but no <laughs> 
So I would rather is number one. I would prefer the second significance is like bastante in Espanol. So you can say rather happy, rather tired, rather hungry, rather before the adjective is similar to bastante in Espanol. Also, it's similar to quite in English. And the third possibility is pretty happy. So these three words have the same significance, really. You are rather with the adjective rather hungry, rather tired, quite hungry, quite tired, or pretty hungry, or pretty tired. And the third possibility with rather is very important and very different. We say rather than, and the significance is instead of. So rather than is the same as instead of. In Espanol, it's en lugar de, and probably in Portuguese, it's the same en lugar de. So here, in this situation, the first one, it's I would rather, with the significance I would prefer to be. Interesting. So after this structure, we eliminate the two. So remember, modal verb, you eliminate two in the next verb. Can, go, might have. This structure, I would rather, it's the same. We eliminate two in the next verb. I would rather like, I would rather go, I would rather be. That's the structure, that's the rule, and it's important little detail. Homeless is the typical suffix. When you do not have a job, you are jobless. When you do not have a home, you are homeless. When you do not have hope, you are hopeless. So we have a lot of words in relation to the suffix less. And here it's homeless. You have no home, jobless, you have no job or die. So they would prefer to be homeless or they would prefer to die than. So that's the com comparison with the choice where. OK, the verb to wear, you can see here with the picture, wear a pair of jeans. So with jeans, we always say a pair of jeans, a pair of jeans, a pair of shoes, a pair of socks. So specific vocabulary we say is in relation to this, a pair. Also for a couple, you can have a pair. So very, very important vocabulary, typically associated with jeans and the vocabulary, sorry, the pronunciation of another word are the genes which are completely different so this is related to dna the genes of the person the genes of the family the genes of the man the genes of the woman it's like the dna the pronunciation is exactly the same but the significance is completely different okay and that's fine a pair of skinny jeans and they are the instagrammers or the tiktokers or the influencers they did is your activity the verb to do did is the past irregular do did far more is like mucho mass so you can say far for a distance i live in dublin and dublin is very far from brazil or dublin is very far from paraguay and um, so that's number one far but also you can say far more so far is for distance and you can say far more which means a lot more okay so I have far more opportunities in Ireland compared to opportunities in England. I have far more books in my room compared to books in here, in the other room. OK, so far more means a lot more. Very simple improvement, very advanced, very fluent and very good. So they did far more than attack a trouser style. So trousers are obviously like pants um, they find. So again, they is the subject find is the verb unflattering is a bit difficult so the verb is to flatter and it's very similar maybe to compliment so if i flatter you i say to you oh you are the best person in the world you are the most intelligent person in the business i flatter you it's like i compliment in espanol like hacer la pelota un poquito um, and flattering is when somebody is the adjective so your comment is very flattering, his comment is very flattering, and the negative is unflattering. So it's like not pretty, not nice, not beautiful, it's not good. So the negative is unflattering. They, alongside, is the preposition with. So I go to the party along with my friend. I go to the party with my friend. I go to the party alongside my friend. So they're very, very, very similar, along with um, along with, you can just say with, or you can say alongside. So these are typical 
prepositions and maybe the association with alongside is parallel. So you drive alongside the river. So you drive parallel to the river. You go to the party alongside your friend. So the, per the friend is parallel to you. It's beside you. Um, so very, very similar to all the prepositions of beside, along with and with. Who, this is the relative pronoun, who, which, that. But who is a person and some people frequently confuse the two. So which and that are very, very similar. These are the relative pronouns, but who is specifically related to a person. So I know a person who is, so it's typically before another verb. I know a person who is Irish. I know a person who is seven foot tall. So who is the relative pronoun before the verb and here. We have the um, subject, so this is the relative pronoun. So the verb is say. It's a complicated sentence because it's a long sentence, but who is the relative pronoun? And the verb is to say. It's irregular because say in the past is said. Innocuous is also a very, very advanced vocabulary and it means very harmless, I think. So innocuous, I think, is very harmless. Or it, it does not seem dangerous. It seems maybe very calm, very easy, very simple. So, innocuous viral said, prove me wrong. That's a typical expression. When somebody does not select you for the job, when you feel uh, somebody did something bad to you, you want to prove them that they were incorrect, they were wrong. So, to prove somebody wrong is the structure. So, you prove, I say to you, Oh, it's impossible you can pass the exam. You have so much work to do, it's impossible. But you disagree and you prove me wrong and you pass the exam. So that's a very famous expression. A single person is just emphasis. We use this structure a lot, a single day, uh, a single person. And it's flexible because number one, it can be soltera or soltero. And that means in relationships, you are a single person. But second, the significance is emphasis for one person. So um, there is not one. So there is not one single day. I do not think about food <laughs> or there is not one single day. I do not think about chocolate. So difficult, a little fluent, a little detail. And here um, this is just emphasis. So it's not soltera, it's not soltero, it's emphasis for absolutely one person. So there is not, e like incluso, there's not even uh, one person that looks better with side parting than a middle part. So as I said, side parting or middle part. Help to transform. So the key with the verb to transform is typical with the preposition into. So you transform the building, you transform the room into an amazing room so at the moment this room is very ugly it's very bare it's very undecorated it's empty so you decide to decorate and to transform this room into an incredible room so transform is typical with the preposition into and we can also say a phrasal verb to turn into okay so you turn this room into a brilliant room you transform this room into an amazing room. So that's the typical vocabulary, the typical expression, the typical phrase of verb. And here it is related transform. A is the article. Remember the possible two articles for the noun. We have a or the. And here the noun is a rivalry. So it's possible a rivalry or the rivalry. So a rival is also a noun, is a person. And the rivalry is the concept i think or the idea it's the rivalry okay so there are two nouns there is a verb to rival so you rival me i rival my friend it's maybe to compete or to challenge so good vocabulary and here the key word is simmering okay so really really good vocabulary the verb is to simmer and it's typical with the water so when you boil the water you make eggs and you make boiled eggs and the water is bubbling. So it's a synonym to bubble, to simmer. Okay, and when you have water that's simmering, it's almost ready, it's almost boiling. And 
the tension, the fight is simmering. So everything is okay at the moment, everything is fine, but under the surface, there are a lot of problems and eventually the problems will explode. But before they explode, everything is simmering. Okay. Also, in relation to weather, when the temperature is simmering, it's maybe 20 degrees, 22 degrees, it's getting very, very hot and it will increase. So it's typical for a fight or an argument and it's also typical for weather. Okay. So really, really good vocabulary, very, very specific, the verb to simmer, which is typical in relation to boil, okay? Um, good, and I think that's really, really good. In the final paragraph, I just want to identify and to focus on the key vocabulary. So here, um, has been criticizing, this is the present perfect continuous, difficult structure, advanced tense, this is the present perfect continuous, Numerous aspects are like parts, so I don't. Is like a river, so a small river. Typically, at the start of the river is a stream, but there is a verb to stream which of course is very typical in the internet. So at the moment, fingers crossed with me, I am streaming my class on Facebook Live. I am streaming my class on Zoom. Hopefully the connection is okay. So the verb to stream is typical on the internet, but it's the same context as the river because it's a flow of data. It's a flow of images and information compared to the river, which is the flow of water. Okay, but we have an expression mainstream mainstream news, mainstream channel on the television. For example, the most common, the most popular, the most watched television channel is mainstream. The same with the newspaper or an idea. This concept is mainstream. The majority of people are accessing this idea. The majority of people are familiar with this idea. It's mainstream. Also, in relation to celebrity, you can be a mainstream celebrity, which is maybe a very, very popular celebrity most people know you so it's a really flexible word and we use it a lot mainstream so remember a stream to stream and mainstream so here aspects of mainstream millennial style so of course there are lots of different styles for millennials but maybe the typical style is the mainstream style okay namely is another way to say for example so this is maybe more advanced you can say namely you can say such as or you could say like or you could say for example or you could say for instance so there's lots of linkers here with the same significance but maybe when you select namely you have to give the official name okay but it's it, it's a good structure and it's very um possible to use in advanced english there are affections for side parted hair and skinny jeans here we have a brilliant expression, unleashed. So again, they is the subject. In the process is maybe the linker or the conjunction, very advanced. They is the subject. The verb is to unleash. It's in the ED, so it's the participle. And the extra auxiliary verb is have. So this structure is the present perfect because it started in the past, it's finished, but it is related. The action and the consequences are related to the present. The verb to unleash is very difficult. A leash, number one, is typical for the dog. When you bring the dog for a walk, you have the collar. This is the collar and you have the leash. <laughs> so the leash is like cordon. And in English, we can say the leash or we have another word, the lead. Okay, so the lead is the object when you take the dog for a walk. And as I said, the collar is the other object. So the verb to unleash is the negative. When you release when you liberate the dog, you take the lead or the leash off and the dog is free. So this is a metaphor in relation to the economy. When you unleash the economic stimulus, you liberate the power of the economy. And here they have released a very, very descriptive English tidal wave of sassy, adjective, adjective, 
adjective adjective reactions so the noun is the reactions we have four adjectives to unleash really advanced english brilliant quality english very fluent very advanced and really really good example of english okay so the verb is to unleash which is maybe um to liberate so again this context is for reactions it's very flexible in other situations so a tidal wave is related to the water yes in the water you have a wave which is an onda but you can have a tidal wave which is more aggressive, it's stronger, it's bigger. This is a tidal wave of complaints. So it's very creative English. It's a metaphor for a big quantity. Okay, so you can say a tidal wave of complaints and that means a big quantity, a large quantity of people complaining. So the verb is to complain and the noun is a complaint. So the verb, there is no T in relation to the verb but the noun, you have a complaint, okay? And typically the verb, we say to make a complaint. Okay, so really important structures, really common to make a complaint in the restaurant, to make a complaint in the business, but the verb is to complain. Just a little detail, the difference between the N and the T. So the complaint is the noun. Very simple, but very important. So sassy. Is like very sexy maybe if somebody's very sassy it's maybe more attitude so if the person has the attitude they are very sassy it could be positive it could be negative self-conscious is good vocabulary for pronunciation self-conscious or self-aware okay these are very typical and you can say self-conscious or self-aware and they are probably the most typical context downright is really really advanced and really good quality it means really absolutely so i am downright angry means i am totally angry completely angry it's a bit more formal it's a bit more polite not formal i would say more formal very difficult but very advanced so spiteful is the adjective and it means um you have a lot of anger or, very, or bitterness okay so bitterness so typical with the children and the brother and the sister so the sister is or the brother the brother is not able to play the computer because the sister is watching television so it's not possible for the brother to play the playstation because the sister is watching the television so the brother is very angry the brother is very bitter and very out of spite or to do something in spite means from badness or bitterness with a very uh, mal, a bad intention. So really, really good. And spiteful means you are full. You have a lot of bitterness. You have a lot of revenge and really, really specific, really advanced vocabulary. Maybe my explanation is not perfect, but I recommend you try to uh, understand this word in the dictionary and you try to study this word because it's really, really good. Um, and it is possible a verb to spite somebody from the other word which is in spite of and despite it's a little different because this structure is a linker a pesar day and it is different compared to out of spite so just be a little careful but be very aware of the significance okay of course a trend is something popular and the adjective is trendy and also you can say trending is the gerundio or the gerund which could be an adjective as well and we also say trending topic which is very typical on twitter so here the trending dispute is like the argument is so um 
Impassion, so so is typically before the adjective to intensify. Happy, so happy. Tired, so tired. Impassioned, so impassioned. Due to is very important as well because of. Okay, due to has a significance because of. I am going to this restaurant due to the other restaurant is closed. So it's because of or owing to, a bit formal. And also you can say due. expecting a holiday or you are entitled to a holiday so due a holiday means entitled to a holiday so you almost deserve a holiday so really really fluent expressions and really adjective article so we have the article a and we have the noun allegiance and we have the adjective in between lifelong so this means for all your life a lifelong supporter a lifelong fan a lifelong follower so here it's an allegiance for all your life typically allegiance to that's the typical preposition you have an allegiance to the football team you have an allegiance to a person typical preposition allegiance to particular genes or hairstyle in question but because of but because the accusation is the noun the verb is to accuse And that's it. So that's the most important vocabulary from the two paragraphs. I'm very happy because only two paragraphs, but in two paragraphs, we have a lot of grammar lessons and we have a lot of vocabulary and we have a lot of expressions in relation to two paragraphs. So fingers crossed, we are still connected on the internet. I have a feeling, maybe not, because sometimes the connection is bad. So fingers crossed, everything is okay. Thank you for staying in contact i think we are working okay i hope the connection is okay because yesterday it was very very slow and that is the most important explanation for an article so i recommend that you try to analyze texts this way when you study i recommend that you try to be very familiar with analyzing the structure of english so this is very important to learn to improve you need to read and you need to analyze the structures of sentences and analyze the structures of paragraphs. This is the key part for you to improve. OK, so maybe I can close this if you want to connect on Zoom. So I'm going to share my uh, code. So let me find the participants and I'm going to copy the link, copy the invitation and I'll post it here. So if you want to connect on Zoom, you can see the code and you can see the link here because maybe some people have a question, maybe you have a doubt, and if you want to participate, now you can contact me on Zoom if you want to ask a question, if you want to practice some speaking. This is the code for Zoom, because of course at the moment I'm using Facebook Live, but also I'm using Zoom, but you are welcome to participate, you are welcome to ask a question, and this is the code and the ID if you want, okay? So that's sufficient from the text, that's sufficient from the article. Maybe um, now I can show you a few expressions in relation to English. These are idioms and, um, well, no, I'm sorry, I'm going to go to phrasal verbs because there's only one more page left of idioms. So now I want to show you some phrasal verbs and because we have a lot more work to do we're on page 15 of 20 and I just want to help with the phrasal verb so I'm going to move I'm playing a game here so I'm just going to move everything here so you can see and yesterday I think we finished with the explanation to run out of and the significance to run out of is when you do not have any more of something so you can run out of time you can run out of energy you can run out of food you could run out of money that means you lose and you have no more money okay now we move to the verb to save so the verb to save is related to rescue so you can save a person 
we can save an animal which is like to rescue okay but you can also save money and you can save time you can save energy and this is typical in relation to ahorrar i think in espanol save money save time you remember the phrase of verb to put money away that means to save as well so to put money away is similar to save but here it's possible with the phrase of verb when you combine a preposition up it's just more emphasis of accumulation because you have nothing at the bottom and if you save up 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 it's relation to grow okay so in relation to money you can save up money which has the significance of accumulation and the significance of to grow okay so it is possible the phrase of verb to save up and here is the explanation to accumulate and the example is i hope como espero and también you need to be clear the verb to hope to wait and to expect in english there are three verbs that are very very different well they're similar but they are different and in spanish i think you have one verb and maybe in portuguese you have one verb esperar to represent the three significances in english so the first significance is to hope which is fingers crossed i hope i hope it does not rain today the second one is to wait in relation to time so i wait for and in english we typically say to wait for like patience okay and the final example is to expect which is maybe more predictable more information more sure okay so you expect it to rain so there's a big difference between the truth in between the three so the example i hope i will be able to save up enough money to go to school the position of enough is very important it's before the noun enough time enough energy enough food so the position of enough is usually before the noun and the adjective it's after the adjective tired enough happy enough so just be careful with the position of enough okay verb to save for example save down no save out no save under nothing save back no so save up is the only possible connection with the phrase with the verb to save okay and i think that's perfect so we'll finish just with one uh, phrase of verb but um obviously we have a lot of work to do in relation to phrase of verbs but here again is the code if you want to participate now, if you want to ask a question, you are welcome. If not, no problem. Remember, social media, you can connect on social media, uh, on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. I have all the channels and the content is very similar. On Instagram, I put some tips and some advice in relation to English. Also today at four o'clock, it's possible another webinar today at four o'clock dedicated to business english the numbers are very low at the moment but if you have an interest to attend today's webinar you can contact me and you can confirm or book your place for today at four o'clock okay so this is social media also everything is free at the moment so the free class at 11 15 of course it's a good opportunity for me to grow online it's a good opportunity for me to grow my business and um, it's really, really nice opportunity to meet and to know new people in different places. So this is great. I have the class speaking in the morning, but it's my job. So if you are happy and if you would like to make a small contribution or if you would like to make a small tip, you are welcome and you can uh, transfer. There's a small uh, payment, a small donation of maybe one euro, for example, and the bank details are here you have the iban which is the number necessary to transfer and all the details for the bank account here the second possibility is the application revolut and you just have the contact phone here to make a small donation and a small support from me and the third possibility is bizum which is popular in spain so if you want to make a donation to make a small contribution a small tip for me it will be fantastic a very good support for me and they are the three best ways because paypal there is a little commission but 
that's the best they're the best ways if you want to support me okay so i think that's everything thank you so much for watching live i think we have some people watching live but also we have some people watching recorded again i apologize for yesterday's uh, connection it was really really bad i think the problem was the bluetooth because i have my mobile phone here and i connect my mobile phone to the laptop for the wi-fi but it's the mac apple mac and i think yesterday it's possible to connect the wi-fi by bluetooth but it's better and stronger with the cable so at the moment i have the cable and it connects hopefully better but it was a disaster when the connection is really really bad and i hope it was good today i think it's good because i'm looking at my picture and it seems to be very clear and that's all the information for today so just remember next week the structure will be almost the same so next week we begin a, a similar week with the same structure in the morning we have the speaking classes at nine o'clock so next week you are welcome to attend the speaking classes at nine o'clock a very good opportunity to practice speaking corrections and vocabulary this morning we had a good class and tomorrow saturday morning at 9 a.m in ireland we will begin another speaking class so you are very welcome to attend there's a very very small fee of one euro and we have a whatsapp group to participate and to book your place the second class tomorrow will continue at 11 15 free completely free more phrasal verbs more idioms more vocabulary so that's on facebook live tomorrow and tomorrow afternoon at one o'clock we have the webinar dedicated to the b2 the first certificate so there's lots of classes lots of possibilities and very very cheap very very good value because remember before the pandemic this was my structure before the pandemic this was my price list so normally you can see that it's normally expensive to pay for a teacher it's expensive to attend a school so for this reason at the moment i'm very happy with the opportunity to help for free and as i said this is the list typical before um last year before the pandemic just to give you an idea of the expense in relation to english classes as you know so this is just extra information so as i said tomorrow we continue with all the classes and that's it so thank you i hope again everything was okay happy friday i hope you will enjoy your weekend and um, have a great day and i look forward to talking to you soon thank you so much have a great day and i'll try now to finish the class because sometimes it takes a long time to close everything so i think i press this button and everything finishes but again have a very good day